This is how to edit videos with the YouTube video editor. In this complete video editing tutorial, we'll share exactly how to use the YouTube editor so that you can easily trim down your videos on YouTube. All right, so we're over on YouTube in our studio dashboard area. I've clicked on content. We wanna go down and find the video that we wanna edit. So I'm just gonna pick this one here and we're going to choose details. Then over on the left here, we have editor. So if we click on this, this is gonna go ahead and open up the YouTube video editor for us. A very quick overview of the interface here before we get to editing. We have the ability to trim and cut. We can blur. We can add audio from YouTube's music library. We can also customize up our end screen at the end of the videos, which we can see down here too. We can add or edit our info cards, and we can also customize up where our ad breaks are in the video, if it's monetized, and if there are ads currently positioned on it. Obviously here we can see our video and we can see the edits we're making here in real time. And then down the bottom here, this is our work area. This is our video editing timeline. But it's also worth noting that this isn't a full featured video editor. Yes, we can trim stuff out. We can make adjustments. We have the ability to take stuff out and to trim things down, but not add stuff in. The only exception to that is audio where we can add music into our videos after they are live on YouTube. So let's come over here to trim and cut. And let's say that we wanted to trim off the start of this video. Maybe I waffled on too long. We could grab this playback head here, this handle here on the left, and we could drag this through to where we want the video to start. So if we want the video to start at this point, we let go, we've now trimmed off the start of this video. Likewise with the end, if we wanna trim off the end of our video for some reason, we can grab this blue handle here on the end and we can drag that back. And our video is now gonna finish at that point. You can see we can't click down here now. It's snapping back to where we've now set the new end of our video. If we wanna undo any changes that we've made here, we can just hit undo. But know that these changes here aren't going to apply until we hit the save button that will show up at the top here. So that's how we can trim the start and the end. But what if there's something in the middle here that we wanna remove? Well, we can play through our video here or we can click and find the area that we want to remove and then we can choose new cut up here. And we can see then we're given a red box here. So anything that's in this red area, which we can adjust, is going to be removed. So we can adjust this left and right until we find the area that we want to remove. Likewise, for the other end of it, how much do we want to remove? Let's say we want to remove all the way through to here. Then I can just hit this little tick here and it's going to apply that cut. So we can see now if we want to play this through, it's going to jump straight across this section here as if it never existed. Now, in order to get more control over this, it's a good idea to zoom in when you're adding these cuts. And if we need to make changes to them, we can put our mouse back over it. We've got an edit button here, so we can edit that cut and maybe have a bit more precision in where we're actually cutting. Or we can also put our mouse over it and we can delete that cut if we want to undo it. But we also have the ability to add in multiple cuts. So let's say there's another section or word or something we wanna remove down here. We can then come up here to add another new cut. I'm gonna zoom out here so that we can shorten this down. Let's say it was only a couple of words that we wanna remove. Let's zoom back in on this and we can adjust this here to remove just the piece that we want. Again, to apply that, we wanna hit the tick. And that section here we can see has now been cropped out. Now, obviously this isn't applied until we hit save and then YouTube will go through and it will process those changes for us. Now, it's also worth noting that it can take sometimes a few hours for these changes to come into play. And you can always come back in here and you can revert your changes. You can undo them and go back to the original video. So for right now, I'm gonna choose discard changes. So that's trim and cut. That's how we can remove stuff from our existing video. Now, we also have the ability in here to blur something out. So if we hit on blur and hit the little plus here, we can do a face blur. So maybe blur out someone's face if you need to protect someone's identity, or we can custom blur, which means that we can select the area that we want to blur out. In one of our YouTube videos, somehow my mobile phone number got leaked. I was able to come in here, use the custom blur, and just cover that up for that section of the video. But I'll show you how both of these work. If we choose face blur here, it's gonna go through, it's gonna detect the different faces in your video, and then you'll just pick the faces that you want to blur out. So once that's done processing, it's gone through our entire video and it's found all of these different faces. These are probably from B-roll or overlay footage. You can see we've got Nick Nimmin, we've got Chantel in here as well, who featured in this video, but we just select the faces that we want to blur out. Let's pick this guy and let's hit apply. And that's going ahead and applying that now. But we can see the areas here that it's mapped out and added this automatically for us. And it's actually tracking my face as it goes through. Whereas for all this section here where I'm not on screen, there's no blur added. 
And we can see it's still processing the rest here because it's flashing. But we actually don't need to wait for this to finish processing. If you're happy with how it's performed at the start here, you can hit save and that will be applied to the rest of your video for you. But the other option with blur, if we hit the plus here was custom blur. And then here we get to specify what shape we want. So right now it's a rectangle. We could switch that to an oval if we wanted as well. We could then stretch that to cover the area that we want to blur. So I've already done face blur. So let's just switch this to a rectangle. And let's say there was some text down here that we didn't want to show. Let's just make sure we've covered that text. We can then see in our timeline down the bottom here on our blur layer, we have this section here that is mapped out for us. I'm gonna zoom out on this so we can see it in its entirety. We get to choose here how long this blurred section is actually on screen. So we can adjust the start time for this blur and the end time for this blur so that it covers just the area that we want inside of our video. You also have the option here though to track the object. So if we did have an oval blur and it was on someone's face, then we could actually track it to the face if we wanted. So it's gonna follow the face around the screen or we can fix it to a specific location. Again, once you've got that in, you just wanna hit save to save those changes. The next option we've got in here is audio. So we can add music into our YouTube video after it's already live on YouTube with this tool. So if we hit the plus button here to add audio, it's then going to ask us to choose only from the YouTube audio library, the YouTube music library. So we can't add our own music to something that's already live on YouTube. But we can go through, we can find the music track that we like, we can search or filter it. We can even pop it out full screen so that it's easier for you to find the music you're after. But let's say that we wanna add this music track here into our video, we can just choose add. And we can see that that's now down here in our timeline. Now we can pick this up, we can move it around so that the music track is going to play for the section that we want. But we can also adjust the music track as well. If we only want a small section of it, we have the ability to adjust the start and end times of that music track too. And we can also adjust the volume level of that music track. So if we press on this button here, then we can adjust our mix level. With the maximum here being full volume, it's gonna be as loud as everything else in your video. But if you want the music a little bit more subtle, then we can dial this down here. And this is where too, you can see that now that I've lowered this volume, it's processing up here. We can then hit play, we can preview this, make sure it sounds the way that we want it. And that audio track can then be added into our video. Now we also have the ability here to add in multiple music tracks. So let's say we wanted this one here as well. Let's hit add. And it just shows up as a separate layer here that again, we can pick up and we can move around to get this music track where we want it. If we wanna remove a music track that we've added, we can press the three little dots here on the side and choose remove and those are removed. Next, we have the ability to edit up our end screen. So if I jump across to the end of our video here, this is where we will have links on screen. And you can see here for this end screen area, we've got three things that are shown here. I can just press edit and that's gonna open up YouTube's end screen editor. This is exactly the same functionality that you have when you're uploading a video and customizing up this last 20 seconds of your video. We have another video specifically on these end screen elements that I'll link in the description box below, but know that you can just hit the plus button here to add in a new element, which become clickable buttons at the end of your video. Very similar to that, we can add in info cards, which are shown up in the top corner of your YouTube video. This is where we can link off to another video, a playlist, link off to your channel, or link off to an external link if you've got that enabled on your channel. So we could just choose link here. We could then paste or type in our link, primalvideo.com forward slash programs, which is where you can see all the different courses and things that we've got. I can hit apply. Now we can see that this has been added into our timeline down the bottom here. Again, we can adjust where we want this shown in the video itself. But if with this selected, we can customize this up further. So based on that link, we can add a thumbnail image or an image to this if we'd like. So it's gonna go ahead and pull one from our website. Let's pick this one, it's a very serious photo. Or we can obviously upload one here too. We can give it a title here, programs and training. We could have a call to action, check out our products, and we can add some teaser text. And you can see with this one, this is actually what's shown as the clickable link. So check out our products, that'll show up the top there. So if we just come back here just before this, let's hit play. And then we can see that that appears at that point in time in our video.
And the last thing we've got in here is ad breaks. If you are monetized and you've got ads turned on for this specific video, then we can edit the ad placement positioning. So if there's specific areas that you wanna have an ad break or an ad play, either by clicking add an ad break here or up the top, and we can see that we've now got a placeholder here for an ad. Maybe we want another one a little bit later on. We can add another one here. But while you've got access to do this, it's actually not something that we do. I'm gonna cancel out of this, discard changes. We normally just leave it up to YouTube as to where it thinks is going to be the best experience for an ad for that specific user or viewer. Now that you're up to speed with the YouTube video editor, if you're looking for something more advanced with more flexibility, more control, then check out the videos linked on screen where we share our top picks for video editing software. As always, there's a bunch of other links and resources in the description box below to help you even further, and I will see you in the next video.